happy Wednesday. So um, I'm a little bit later today because I just did um, an empowered peace session with a lady and um, you know, she gets the peace and she gets the empowered peace and, and because I'm participating, I'm just feeling incredibly at peace and empowered and like all my jugs are filled my hormones are all in balance. My chemicals are doing what they're supposed to. And um, I can handle anything. I love that feeling. So some people use drugs to get that feeling, but you don't have to. You can tap into peace and then go deeper into it and, and get empowered by it. So it's, it's a little, it's, a, it's an exercise that I, uh, that I do with people from time to time. So right so i'm going to read just part of a letter because this next letter is quite long um, so um, it's not going to take too long tonight fourth letter 12th of february my dear family and friends the news is dominated by images of bushfire ravaged victoria you may remember the bushfires this was 10 years ago 2009 the women here are just as shocked and saddened as anyone outside. We are participating in a walkathon on Saturday to help the bushfire appeal. Uh, so that was where we would donate from our allowance that the, the pay that we get for the work we do. Um, we could put some money in to help with the donations. Don't worry, I'm not asking anybody for sponsorship money. I don't need much money here anyway. We were told that if we donate from our own trust accounts, we could walk around the grounds for one hour. We have lovely grass and fragrant flowering bushes. We're not allowed to walk on the grass normally, so that would be nice. <laughs> and I wrote in here afterwards, um, instead, instead we were locked in a fenced sports field to walk in circles in the sun for the hour. It also meant I missed chapel because they were delayed in getting us out. Anyway, it was for a good cause. The sports field never gets used for sport. Apparently, it's too hard to supervise. If there's a fight at the far end, uh, there's too much violence can be done before the officers can get there to break it up. So we have a sports field, but we weren't allowed to use it. Um, we're not allowed on the grass. Sometimes I reach out and pluck a fragrant flower and keep it with me. It smelled like freedom. Of course, I wasn't allowed to do that either, but I was very discreet. We walk instead on concrete paths from one building to the next. Some blades have managed to push their way up between the concrete floor and the wall of our caged yard. It's like a pen. I like to sit and feel these. So I'd sit on the floor and lean against the concrete wall and I would just touch my fingers to the little blades of grass that would come through the cracks. I told some of the girls I was desperate to roll on the grass. So I picked a few gallant blades and dropped them on the concrete under the basketball hoop and I laid down rolling on them from side to side. <laughs> it made them laugh. I remembered the young woman I'd met who'd claimed to be a firebug. She was just fascinated by fire. She was also a drug addict and had a wild, crazed look in her eyes. She really did. Such people are unable to think ahead about consequences. It's as though they become retarded at, a, as in no longer developing their, their arrested development at a certain age, uh, at a particularly immature stage. And as such, it's difficult for them to have compassion for others. Their life is all about satisfying their immediate desires, whether it's drugs, sex, or an outburst of profanity. And uh, I had heard, you know, that, that people who are traumatized at a particular age can, um, that unless they get healed from it, they can, often stay in that, that like the, the triggers and the emotional reactions of that stage where they're at um, can often be 
how they how they are when they move forward, like when they're challenged or they have come under stress. We revert back. It's a bit like when you go back home and visit your parents and you and you and your siblings are there and you could be 30 or 40 years old but you still act like children and, and tell each other what to do and don't tell me what to do and, and you just revert. So <laughs> it can often be the way. A lady asked me why God would let those bushfires rage out of control and kill so many. Best answer I had was, I don't know. I could point her to books about apologetics and I could talk about the fall of man and grace and it's a fallen world and a broken planet, but the truth is we're only guessing and a guess doesn't provide comfort. What she really wanted was some reassurance and some comfort. What I do know since then is that you know, he is our comfort in the troubles that we go through, in the fire, and um, it is how we respond to things that determines how well we go on. So when, when things really are hard and difficult and, and unjust, um, you're much better off turning to him than away from him. At least that's been my experience. Sinners do sinful things. Sin separates from God, so why blame God? Why blame God? He didn't start the blazes, and he didn't. And if you don't believe in God, you can't blame him. People did it, or whatever it was that caused it. Sometimes it's arsonists. That's people, and they, angry people do angry things. Stupid people do stupid things. However, he does expect his people to do something about them. The best I can do is share God's love and his desire to be part of our lives, but he won't intrude if we ignore him. One poor lady has a daughter who gave birth at the age of 15 to a stillborn baby. Now at 16, she's about to give birth again. She needs her mum but she's still not speaking to her. So even though the mum's in jail, um, <clears throat> the daughter is not speaking to her. She's angry at her mother for being stupid enough to drive unlicensed and get locked up. Like her own choices have been so smart. So many poor decisions result in great pain and it's complex and it's messy. <sighs> And that's, we can't go through life making every perfect decision. We can learn wisdom, but life throws us curveballs and it is hard. Um, and we don't always get the training that the ideal family would give us. And, but, you know, if we had everything perfect and knew everything perfectly, <coughs> then, <coughs> excuse me, then, I often think we can lack compassion. <clears throat> because it's when we've made mistakes. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> if you never make a mistake, how can you empathise with someone? <clears throat> how can you bring them alongside and help them to know what's better? Sorry, it's just a bit of um, <clears throat> moisture in the throat, scratching. <laughs> if I was pre-recording this, I would start again. But anyway, we're all here, we're all together, and I'm fine. <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not crying, although I can get quite moved by that topic because just when I feel angry and upset with someone who's done something really stupid, I'm often reminded that uh, <sighs> this is the human condition and sometimes a bit of compassion and putting your arm around someone and saying, hey, come on, that can bring them back on track because no one has the ability to beat ourselves up like we do and that's probably the same for those people who feel silly too. So anyway, <clears throat> and maybe it's the mood I'm in from being so peaceful, but uh, anyway, that's life and uh, there are difficult things that we go through. I don't have all the answers, but I know where to draw comfort and strength to move forward. It's all right. Well, you guys have a good night and I'm going to go up and finish cooking dinner and uh, take it from there. All right. Bless you heaps. Bye.